Good morning, whole community. Today we are in a new letter. We just finished Matthew chapter 28, and wow, what an amazing, amazing um, book, gospel that was. And I'm a little sad that we're no longer in Matthew, and but I'm excited for whatever next gospel we'll go to in a little while. But today we are in in First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter one. So Timothy. Um, today, I will not go too much um, into the background of this letter. I think I'm going to save that for either chapter 2 or chapter 3. So that's either on Thursday or Friday, maybe even Saturday. I'll go over some of the background of this letter. Um, and the reason being is because there's, there's just some things in these chapters that I, that I want to get through. So I don't want to spend too much time in the background just yet. It doesn't mean I'm not going to give you the background. It just means not yet, okay? But first thing, one thing you need to know is Timothy, um, Timothy is like Paul's spiritual son. Timothy was with Paul um, during some parts of his missionary journeys. And so, so Timothy, he's, um, Timothy was a really great disciple. You know, he ends up becoming a pastor a very young pastor and we get some really good verses out of one of some of these letters to Timothy. There's some great truths especially for uh, for people who are younger cuz Timothy was young. And so Timothy is like a spiritual son to Paul. And so Timothy was with Paul during some of his missionary journeys and Timothy um he said yes to being circumcised. Not because Timothy needed to be circumcised to be saved or because he needed to be righteous or he needed to be godly. No, no, no. The reason that Paul asks Timothy to be circumcised and Timothy's like, yeah, I'll do it, is because he wanted no stumbling blocks, nothing to come in between Timothy and people. He, he, want, he wanted Timothy, just like Paul, to be able to minister to people freely without people saying, without people already rejecting him now you might be thinking well that's wrong like if people want to hear the gospel if people want to hear the truth then then they should like like they shouldn't care about the outward appearance but people do care about the outward appearance and sometimes l listen we never compromise truth we never compromise truth but we still need to walk in love so we can walk in love without compromising the truth so does timothy need to be circumcised to be saved no that's the truth Timothy does not need to do it to be saved, okay? Timothy is saved. He loves Jesus. So why is he being circumcised? Because he loves people for the sake of other people, for the sake of not putting a stumbling block in front of other people. Let me give an example. In one of Paul's letters, he talks about the, the in, in Corinth, Ephesus, Corinth. It was Corinth. In, in, in Corinth, Corinth was like an amazing city because it was like it was it was a port city so you had a lot of um international people coming through with different cultures and the city of Corinth had a lot of temples to false gods false idols um of the Greek and the Romans they they had their own temples so what would happen we went we went over this when we talked about um Corinthians but I just want to speak to you know what kind of man Timothy was because this is who Paul was writing to. So in the city of Corinth, Paul says, hey, some people think it's right that you guys are eating meat sacrificed to idols, and some people think it's wrong to eat meat sacrificed to idols. Some people's consciences say it's okay. Some people's consciences say it's not okay. Now here's what was happening. These temples, they would have, you know, these sacrifices of these big cows or these big goats or these whatever they're sacrificing, right? Um, I'm not sure if they had cows, actually. But... And they wouldn't, they wouldn't consume all the meat in the ceremony. So they would go on the streets and they would say, "Hey, this is the leftover. You know, here's some thighs and some and and, and some legs right here. We're fifty percent off because we don't we we have too much. So here and then, so Christians, you know, on 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 a on a Saturday, because back then it was Saturday. On a Saturday, they'd be leaving the church and. And, you know, they'd be like, you know, are you ever hungry after church, right? And after church, they're walking by, I was like, oh, look, you know, let, let's, let, let, let's eat some birria today, some goat. If you guys don't know what birria is, it's a really good 
Um, although they have beef birria as well, and that's really good. Not the point. But so Christians will be like, oh, look, meat, 50% off. Let's buy it. They would buy it. They take it home. They cook it. They have a great meal. But then people would see that and be like, oh, that person just bought meats from a temple that's, that, 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 that worships other gods. Oh, my gosh, they're sinning. So Paul said, for the sake of the person who thinks it's wrong, don't do it. For the sake of the person who thinks it's wrong, don't do it. Now, is it compromise in truth? No, it's personal. It's, it's a personal conviction. And if they're convicted that it's wrong, then you can put a stumbling block and say, oh, I'm going to do it anyway. And now you create divides between people who think it's right and people who think it's wrong. And Paul talks over and over again about the unity of the spirit. And so we, we need to choose unity over our personal preference. So he says, don't buy that meat, don't eat that meat for the sake of other people's conscience. So it's the same thing with Timothy. Timothy, you're going to be circumcised for the, sake of, for the sake of where other people are. Not because you need it, but because the people need it. Amen. And Timothy was more than willing to do it. Paul says, I, I, I'm, I'm all things to all men that I may save a few. I'm all things to all men that I may save a few. Pastor Drew said this a few years back, but he was like, hey, if, Pastor Drew said, if green pants meant that you'd get saved, I would do it. If pink shorts meant that people would get saved, I would do it. See, we're not compromising truth, but we're meeting people where they're at. Does that make sense? Anyway, so let's get started with uh, today's chapter. So, First Timothy chapter one. Oh, let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you will speak to us through your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. Amen. To Timothy, a true son in the faith. Oof, those are good words. Those are really good words. We see. We we um. How do I say it? it it's it's not like Paul says this often. Does that make sense? It's not like Paul says this like, you know, in all of his letters. No, he's saying a true son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach you, that they teach no other doctrine. So this letter is specifically addressed to Timothy. It says right here, to Timothy, a true son in the faith. Now, we know this was a public letter because it was a public letter. One, we have it today. Um, and two, he, he says things about the church. So we know that this letter wasn't just, it, it, was, met, it was addressed to Timothy but it was read out loud. Now, so this is different because we're used to reading letters of, you know, Ephesians to the church in Ephesus, Galatians to the church in Galatia, churches in Galatia, um, Corinthians to the church in Corinth, right? So we are used to reading letters to churches, but here it's going to be a little bit different. It's kind of exciting, actually, um, to, to now see a personal letter from Paul to a true son in the faith. Timothy, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and um, Jesus Christ our Lord. As I urge you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. You notice, so very interesting, you notice that Paul is always, always, and I mean always, Paul is always talking about doctrine. If anybody comes, whether it's us, whether it's angels, if they come and preach a different gospel, let them be accursed, right? Paul says this over and over again. Why? Because right believing is more important than right doing. Listen to me. Right believing is more important than right doing because you can do the right things with the wrong beliefs. You can do the right things for the wrong reasons, right? Right believing will produce... Um, Right to believe in will produce a godly doing. Amen? So, so you'll see Paul is always attacking doctrine, making sure that doctrine is true and is right. Amen? So, um, so as I urge you, when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. 
nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart. Ooh, that's good. We just talked about that, right? Um, you know, being loving more than being right. So, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk. Ooh. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for the righteous person but for the lawless and insubordinate for the ungodly and for the sinners for the unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for manslayers for fornicators for sodomites for kidnappers for liars for perjurers and if there's any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which, is, which was committed to my trust. What's he saying? The law isn't for the righteous because the righteous don't need the law. The righteous need faith in God. Amen. The righteous already know what's right to do because they have the word of God. The righteous already know what to do because they're good. They have the Holy Spirit. They love Jesus. And he talks about the commandment is love, right? So as long as you're doing something in love, it's probably the right thing to do. And this is a good test for all of us. What am I about to say to this person? Or what am, what am I about to do to this person? Is this loving? Is this honoring to God? And is this loving to the person? And the answer is yes. And it's probably the right thing to do. Given that it, that it lines up with the word of God. Amen. So Paul's saying the law isn't so much for righteous people. Because we already know what the right thing to do. We don't need the government or a law to tell us killing is wrong. But for people who are unholy, for people who don't know Jesus, for, for people who hate God, they need the law to tell them it's wrong. Does that make sense? And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. Me too. Me too, Paul. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignor ig ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Wow. This is a faithful saying and the worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him forever and last in life. Paul right here is actually saying, he's like, I'm an example right here. Paul's saying like, I, like God was merciful to me even though I was doing things that were wrong that were unholy that were I, I was sinning I was in the wrong yet Jesus gave me mercy and Jesus was long suffering with me with me I'm the chief of sinners and Jesus was long suffering with me that means no one has an excuse and no one is beyond saving amen now to the king eternal immortal Invisible to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to stop right there. So, Paul right here, he's, we, he's, he's establishing a couple of things. One, he references his testimony. And then number two, he, um, he sets up some ideas about the law. And what did he begin with? Doctrine. He talks about doctrine, right? He mentions doctrine, right? He's like, Timothy, make sure when you're right here in, what does he say? I think he says, remain in Ephesus, right? He's like, Timothy. As you're here in Ephesus, make sure the doctrine stays on point. And now let me give you some examples concerning the law. The law is not for the righteous. It's for the sinners. Because the righteous don't need the law. They already know what's right. And then he goes into his testament about how God is merciful, uh, long-suffering. And then he goes into God's deity, right? And... Actually, how about we finish this chapter? Because we literally only have like two verses left, I think, or three. Verse. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected, concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck, of whom are... Himenaeus and Alexander, who I do my delivered to send that they may learn not to blast 
theme. <laughs> wow, Paul is relentless here, but we'll talk more tomorrow about these two people. Um, we'll see. But doctrine, the law, God's merciful. Amen. So read this, read this again to kind of give to and 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 read it from a. Um, how do you say? It? Not read it from a, read it from a perspective. But Paul is talking to a person, okay? And I think you'll find some really cool things in this chapter. So I'm excited for chapter two tomorrow, and um, yeah, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that we will learn so much from this relationship that Paul had with Timothy, God, and these. And, these, and through these chapters that we read, God, help us to hear your spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. That will conclude today's Daily Hope. I know today's got out a little bit late, too. I had some technical difficulties today, um, which I'm not sure if I have fixed yet. Um, but we'll fix them soon, I pray. Um, but before we let you go today, I want to remind you that people are hearts. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite, and Jesus is our Lord. See you tomorrow, 10 a.m.